everyone, it's Julia, and welcome back to my channel. I am working on a t shirts sweatshirts, and a lot of upcycles the next couple weeks. Um, for those of you that don't know, I do have a summer shop um, in with our local flea market, and I do a lot of apparel, and so I'm going to be filming quite a few of those in the next few weeks, um, but I wanted to start with this one today. This is a t-shirt, um, it's a comfort wash. It's a size large. I love working on these because the weight is a little bit heavier and because I do a lot of applique and adding embellishments and things, it just the weight is great for that. Um, and it's a, like I said, it's 100% cotton. The one thing is they, the larger sizes get really long. And so on this shirt I'm going to be doing I'm actually going to be doing this dragonfly and I'm going to be putting I think three of them down right down the center I just thought that would be kind of kind of neat but I think I'm going to try to do um, something on the bottom just to, 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 to move it up a little bit because of the length I do like wearing my some of my t-shirts long just to kind of cover up when I wear yoga pants or whatever and so hopefully you somewhat have that option to take it down if you want um, anyway, I'm, I'm going to give it a try, maybe do something different with the sleeve too. I hope you enjoy this. Let's get started. I just recently picked up this fat quarter and I just love the way the colors work with this t-shirt. So I'm going to be using that for the dragonfly wings. I have my heat and bond light and I'm going to just trace these wings on the paper side of, of this um, heat and bond light. And I'm, I'm doing six of these t-shirts, and so I will be doing 18 of these wings. I do want to mention too that this design is, I saw this three dragonflies, I believe on Pinterest, and I think it was done in paint. So these three dragonflies down the center of the t-shirt. And so that's where I got my inspiration to do this. I ironed that on the back side of this batik, which was kind of hard to tell It's because it, it, they were, but it was a little bit of a difference on one side and that I chose to be the back side of this batik. And then I'm using this black print for the body of the dragonfly. Now I did, I did six of these t-shirts, so I actually did 18 wings, 18 bodies, um, but I'm just showing just a couple of them here. Um, Right now I'm trying to find the center front of this t-shirt and so I figured the neckline and the ham, this does this t-shirt does not have side seams and so it's a little bit tricky but I just just kind of flattened it out and to figure out where that um, those side seams were and now I've got that crease down the middle that press mark so I can kind of tell where I want these dragonflies just to get them in the center and I'm laying these out three of them in a row down the center of this t-shirt trying to get them somewhat even and then I remove the bodies because I do not want the bodies ironed on at this time I'm going to be taking this to my sewing machine and I'm using a multicolored thread for the wings in the this thread is colors and oranges and pink similar to the fabric now I'm struggling here because I do not have any stabilizer underneath this knit and after this wing, I added the stabilizer. I could just, it just wasn't laying the way I wanted it to lay. And it's kind of puckering a little bit, just having some difficulties here. And so I added the stabilizer and now it's much easier to, um, to get this going. And this is a, a, a stitch and tear that I use and I'll link all my supplies down below. I'll also link this particular t-shirt if you are interested in it. It, it is a really good quality t-shirt. Now once those wings are sewn on, I'm, it's back to, my, back to my ironing board. I'm going to get those, the bodies of these dragonflies into place. And now back to my sewing machine and I'm going to draw on the little antennas and then just also like a little, little spiral at the bottom here just to add some doodling. Now on that heat, that stitch or stabilizer is still on the back and that I will remove after all these little, these little dragonflies are on. 
onto the sleeve. I just want a little bit of detail. And so I'm just smoothing these out. I'm gonna give this a quick press. And then I'm just gonna roll that hem up twice just to shorten these a little. And then I'm just gonna stitch that just close to the edge using that same multicolored thread. Just gonna stitch along that. And then when that is stitching is all done, I don't show this, but when that stitching is all done, I'm just gonna add a little piece of that, that cool batik fabric, just in a little rectangle shape. And then I'm gonna stitch that on as well, just to add a little detail to that sleeve. And now onto this, the bottom here. Now you can see that side seam crease. Like I said, this does these, this t-shirt does not have side seams, but I'm adding a little square of the same fabric and it has the heat and bond light on the back. This is like a one inch square and I'm using my five inch ruler. So I'm placing this approximately five inches up on both of my side seams. I'm just gonna add a little drawstring and try to just to add a little bit of something to the bottom of this, just to get that length up a little bit. I marked the center and then I took my crop -a dial and I just punched that. And I have to always remove a little bit of that fabric at the, at the underneath. The crop -a dial is really meant, or is designed for, for paper, but I really love it for punching holes in fabric, but you do have to remove that little bit of that punch. And then I have the this, this strip of the, or so it's 22 inches long and a one and a half inch wide and I'm gonna make these fabric tubes. So I'm just gonna stitch the edge at my sewing machine. I'm sharing how I'm finishing off this one inch square. I'm just going around with my free motion foot and then I'm gonna, just gonna go around and around that circle as well. You can also put like a little buttonhole in there, um, but I find that this is just the easiest. Now onto these fabric tubes. I have sewn them shut, and now I'm using my fast turns um, to turn these. Now these fast turns, I purchased mine about 25 years ago, and they are an investment. They're a little bit pricey, and they sat in my sewing room, I'm not kidding you, for probably 20 years, and I really didn't use them, and now all of a sudden I'm I use them all the time. I add them a lot. I make bracelets with these tubes and just do a lot of different things. Um, and I, again, I'll link that down below too. I'm cutting those strips in half and so they're appro approximately 11 inches long. And then each side is gonna get one of these. I'm just gonna punch that through that little hole. I am using my Oh, just like a snip just to kind of get that started and then I'm just gonna knot tie a knot at the end of it now like I said this is just gonna add some detail it's gonna shorten it a little bit um, and that can easily be taken down too I don't finish the bottom of this of this tubes or these um, fabric tubes but I do knot at the bottom of them. So I'm going to tie a knot right at the bottom of the t-shirt and then I'm going to tie a knot in each one of these little ends just to cover that raw that raw seam. And that completes the t-shirt. I hope you enjoyed this. I do have some pictures at the end um, and you'll see a close up here in a little bit. I did put a bead at, in the center of each one of these dragonflies and I did just hand do that. I just added it, that with um, just some needle and thread. I just thought it added a little bit of pop of color. Thank you everybody who's joined me today. Have a great week. Bye for now.